Hi everyone, Matt Kleskowski here with some tips for your local adjustments when it comes to being an edit and on side of on one 2020 and the brushes and the gradients and just some tips that I find people don't know about. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm going to go jump into edit mode with the first photo here. And, uh, and the, the one thing I find a lot of people just kind of glance by is when we're inside of that local adjustments panel, let's say maybe you go up here and you use a, you know, some type of a gradient to darken the sky. All right. So maybe we darken that sky a little bit. Maybe we jump in and we add another adjustment and we use, let's say a brush to go in and, you know, paint a little darkness or brightness. Maybe I'll even increase the brightness a little bit onto certain parts of the photo. So what's happening now is we're starting to build these local adjustments and you just get this list of local adjustments. Again, if I add another one and start to do something, now you have three local adjustment layers. Well, to help keep them a little bit more tidy, all you've got to do is come over here and just double click on the name and I can change this to sky and then I can double click on that name and I can change this to, uh, let's say, how about mountain? Etc. So I can go here, just double click on the name. And that way, when you look at them, if you can't tell by the mask, which is really tiny, at least by the name of that local adjustment layer, you'll be able to know exactly what they do. Next up, another thing that y'all find me doing quite a bit is I will use whether it's brushes or gradients or, or whatnot. I'll go over here into the local corrections panel. And in this case, I think I'll add a little bit of light with um, the vignette edge option here, and then I'll just click and I get this, you know, circle or oval shape that I can do things to. So I'll just add a little bit of light inside of here and rather than negative exposure, increase the exposure a little bit. And I find myself doing the same things over and over again. I find myself adding exposure and then exposure will typically make things look white and flat almost give a milky type of a look. So sometimes I'll add a little bit of warmth to it as well. Uh, maybe even a little bit of structure or contrast to give it some contrast in those areas. So essentially what you have is just a little bit of a, a light source here. Because I find myself adding the same things over and over again, exposure, structure, some temperature. One of the things you can do is come up here right under the adjustment layer, you'll see opacity, and then you'll see a couple of style presets but if you click on more, you could go down here to the bottom and you can save that as a style. So I'll just call this, you know, Matt's light effect. All right, I'll hit save. And now whenever I come in here, let's go ahead and delete that layer. Let's add a new adjustment layer and I'll even make the sliders all crazy. Uh, whenever I come in here, I can click on more and then I can go and I can choose that preset that I just created. It's going to live right up here at the top. All right. So I can just click on that. And now it puts my settings right at what they were before. So I don't have to go in here every single time and create those. While we're on that topic, uh, another thing that again, just sneaks by a lot of people is the fact that we can come in here and we can reset our sliders. All right. So the, the whole reason that this comes in handy is because we may, again, we may do something to the photo and it's a pain in the neck to go back and, you know, bring every slider, double click every slider. You can double click them, double click the name at least. And there's another extra tip for you. You can double click the name and set it to zero. But if your sliders are ever so whacked out that you're not happy with them, just go up here. There's a little rewind button and that will reset all of your sliders to their zero value. So then you can go in there and you can start adding uh, your, your settings on top of that. All right, moving on down the line, let's take a look at some advanced settings. So I'm going to go and we'll grab this photo of an Osprey and I'm going to go to my local corrections. And one of the things I do a lot is I will increase the exposure a little. I'll go and grab my local adjustment brush and I'll just come inside of here and just type or just, paint in a little bit of brightness. All right. Nothing too crazy, just a little bit of brightness. And I'm, I'm being even fairly haphazard. I don't have to keep it within the edges there. Um, but what happens in, in my opinion is I wanted to brighten some of those darker areas. What I don't want to brighten the really bright areas. 
So we have a setting that's it's, it's located inside of your advanced settings. So whenever you have a local adjustment brush and you see that little gear icon, that means there's blending and advanced settings located inside of there. So what we can do is we can change this and say, number one, you've got all of your blending modes listed there if you wanted to change those, but you also have this apply to. So I could say only apply this to the highlights, which will hide it from the shadows and actually do the opposite of what I want. I don't want it to apply to the highlights. I just want it to apply to the shadow areas. So I'll just click on shadows. If you want to see before, that's what we started with. And then after, now we're just applying that brightness to some of those darker areas. We're not applying it to everywhere else. So it's a nice way to keep yourself from having to be meticulous about the way that you're brushing just by using some of these advanced settings that are located, these advanced blending options that are located that you'll reach just inside of that little gear icon right there for that adjustment layer. All right, last one. So this adjustment layer that we just added here, this adjustment is a mask. And I know a lot of times that we think that because I created it with a brush or because maybe I created it with a gradient. In fact, let's, let's use a different example because I think more often than not, I find myself doing these types of things with gradients. So we'll actually go, we'll actually go to, in fact, I think we'll go to, yeah, we'll, we'll use the, 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 the Venice photo that we had before. I'll go to my local adjustments and I'll do the same thing that I did before. I will go and I will use the vignette on the edges and increase in fact i'll use my preset that i just created and then i'll just go and now we've got this little vignette that we added inside here as you can see what i would really want is the light because the light would center here and then it would just tail off as it gets a little bit further away but what's happening with this gradient is that i'm actually and let's make it a little bit more dramatic just so we can see it okay What's happening with this gradient is it's adding all this light over here on the left-hand side as well. Well, even though we created it with a radial gradient, it doesn't mean we're stuck with a radial gradient, okay? So once we know that this is just a mask, right? This is just a layer that's brightening things, and then it's got a mask attached to it that's only doing it in certain areas, we can click on that mask, and now we've got all of our masking options available to us. All right, whether we want to do luminosity, whether we want to feather it, whether we want to invert it and make it the exact opposite of what it was, which we don't, or reset it. But the nice part about it is because we know that it's a mask, now I can go over here to my masking options. And so I'm now no longer going to be creating local adjustments. I know it looks the same, right? We have a brush and we have a, a gradient filter up there. And if you go between local and that, you would, there, there's the same things. But now, we're saying we want to work on the mask. And even though we created this mask with a radial gradient, we can go click on the brush. We can set this to paint in or paint out whatever is relevant for your photo. Paint out is what would be relevant for this. And I would go in here and maybe bring the opacity down a little bit. I would go in here and make my brush a little bit larger and start painting out that effect from the parts of the photo that I want it on. All right, so now I'm mixing and matching my adjustments, all right? It is still a local adjustment layer, but in this case, rather than being bound to just one shape, whether I use the gradient or the brush tool, once you understand that this is just a mask, all right? In essence, this is a layer that is brightening a part of the photo, and there's a mask that's, that's holding it back from certain areas. Once you understand that, now you can go in here with any masking tool possible, and you can go in and you can adjust that local correction. So even though you might have created it with, let's say, a linear or a radial gradient, you can still go in there and brush it away, or add, if I wanted to add it into areas too, I could come down here and add, and you can go in and brush or add to certain parts of the photo with your other masking tools. So I do think these are the most powerful tools that we have in any editing application uh, are these local adjustments that we can do to the photo. I think they're the most important things we can do to the photo and hopefully these little tips help you get a little bit more out of it.